Guys, are you really, really scared of this hyperinflation that's happening? Stay tuned to this video. You may get a big surprise of how you can help fight it off. And guys, you're going to love the video. And I'll be right back. Hey guys, this is Keith with Coin Crew. How you doing today? Today we're going to be talking about hyperinflation. Yeah, hyperinflation. Do you want this or do you want that? So, we're going to weigh out all the, uh, I guess you could say, different valuations, equations, so forth and what. Uh, but before we get into it, if you haven't already subbed our channel, please do so. Don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss out on future notifications for videos such as this. So, let's get into it. What is hyperinflation? Hyperinflation is a term best described the excessive out of control general price increases in a given economy. While inflation is measured at a the pace rising price of goods and services, hyperinflation is normally a rising inflation, typically measuring more than 50% per month. That's right, that seems like a lot. The goods go up 1% one month and then one and a half percent the next month. That seems like a lot. Yeah. So my question is, this mostly affects your fiat currency. That's all this, all this stuff right here, all this green bags. Um, so how does it start? What is the beginning? What are the precursors to hyperinflation? Well, part of what we know about hyperinflation is basically like it's just kind of the growing increase, I, could, I guess you could say, more like the increase of, I don't know, say a cup of coffee. Imagine drinking a cup of coffee, and before you finish that cup of coffee and you go back to buy another one, it costs twice as much. That's kind of like what you would say hyperinflation, so to speak. And... Um, what causes it? Out of control government spending. And we know a lot about out of control government spending, don't we guys? We hear it on the news all the time. We have so many people who get unemployment and that's out of control when you're not actually looking for a job and you're getting unemployment. Um, excessive printing of currency. And we know a lot about that too. All them stimulus checks that everybody has received. Yes, it was great getting all of this cash for free but what that's going to do to us it's going to make the cost of a gallon of gas go up it's going to make you know going to the movies going shopping getting some groceries go up so what you got to ask yourself is is hyperinflation good in my opinion now i'm no expert no financial advisor this is just my opinion I don't think it is. Um, let me give you some examples of hyperinflation that have happened in the past. One of the first examples of hyperinflation recorded was during the French Revolution, where the monthly inflation rate peaked at or about 143%. That's a lot. That means if I paid... $10 for a lamp or whatever happened to be $10 at the time, that means next month I was paying $14.30. Did I calculate that right? Let me get a calculator and calculate that right. Hang on just a second. Yeah, I calculated it right. I just had to check with the old trusty calculator here because, as you know, I kind of freestyle these videos and... I just do all this stuff from memory, and I did that calculation in my head. It wasn't too bad. But anyway, the first one was during the French Revolution, 143% one month. That's huge. I mean, that is absolutely huge. That means if I had something that costs 1000 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, $1,000, now I'm going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, and another 30 just to buy that same item the following month. Now, that was the first recorded 
uh, hyperinflation was the French, during the French Revolution. However, there were no more recorded hyperinflation eras, so to speak, uh, until like the 20th century. And oh, lordy, lordy, did we get a lot of them. There was like 17 hyperinflation that occurred in Eastern Europe, Central Asia. There was also five in Latin America, four in Western Europe, one in Southeast Asia, and there was even one in Africa. Now, if I did my numbers right again in my head, that's like 22 of them that were reported during the 20th century. That was just 21 years ago, 122, 21 years ago. So that's a lot, considering there was only one recorded before that, and now you got approximately 22 or more. I mean, you had Wilmar Republic, you had Venezuela, you had Zimbabwe, you had a lot of them. Now, as for the U.S., we didn't have one. There were a couple of periods in which the U.S. did exceed 50% inflationary rate, which is a threshold for hyperinflation, um, which pales in comparison to most dramatic cases. And as I said, the two, however, did not happen in the 20th century in the U.S. It happened during the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. That's where we did pick that 50% uh, inflation up monthly. So you got to ask yourself, why didn't the U.S. enter into a hyper hyperinflation period during the, um, the virus we just had over the past year, during the Great Recession of 2008? Well, what we had was quantitative easing with low interest rates, uh, and that did help out a lot. Now, with that quantitative easing and those low interest rates, I don't think they helped out as much as the government lets us on to believe. Now, what I'm trying to say is hyperinflation hurts your dollar, but what does it do for your gold? What does it do for all your silver? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Am I better off keeping my money in the bank and earning this low interest rate, or I, am I better off taking my money and putting it in the gold, in the silver? It doesn't pay me no interest at all. But what it does for me during these times of hyperinflation is it helps. It helps a whole lot. So basically, guys, during times of hyperinflation, the U.S. government is sitting there trying to lower the interest rates, but they keep printing more money. How is that fruitful? How is it beneficial to you and me? It's not. It's not beneficial at all. So what we want to do, guys, um, I guess I'm kind of stumbling here, man. What we want to do is we want to keep buying our gold and silver because there's no telling that if we can be like one of those other two, 22 countries were in the 20th century, are we going to have, is that going to happen to the United States of America? I don't know. I'm just a guy. I just don't know. They tell me we're sitting at 5%. I, I seen gas go up 40 cents last month. I seen my gallon of milk go up a dollar. That's a dollar for Michigan on a gallon of milk. That's a 30% increase. That's a lot more than 100% per annual. So, guys, what you want to do to help fight hyperinflation? You do want some of this. Some of this fiat is good. I mean, it's, I mean, it's good. It, it helps you pay your bills. You don't want to be completely out of fiat. That is a definite. Don't run out. Because if you can't pay your bills, then you have to get some more of that worthless money right there, that worthless stuff, to pay those bills. 
So that means you have to sell some of your real money, your real gold, your real silver. You have to sell it. And year after year, decade after decade, when I could buy a gallon of gas for a silver quarter, I can buy it today and still have some change. But if I'd have kept that fiat right there, there's no silver quarter there. It's going to lose money. So, guys, the best way to fight hyperinflation and the best thing to do for this runaway inflation, this government printing all of these worthless, I mean totally worthless fiat money, you got to keep enough of your silver, keep enough of your gold, keep your fiat down to a minimal what you need to live for one to two years. So, in closing... If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you got anything to say about it, comment below. So until next time, guys, enjoy the videos. Like everything you like and buy all the silver and gold you can because you won't be sorry. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye.